Hi, Robin Bowen here. We're going to be looking at getting and installing R. You can find out more details at wwwrobin beaumontcouk slash virtual classroom slash slash course1.html. This is part of an introductory course in medical statistics. Right, so the simplest way to find where R is is just to go to Google and type in R. And as one would expect, the first link is to the R project for statistical computing, which is what we need. On the left hand side of the page, you will find um, an option that says Download and Package. Click on that, and then we're offered with a selection of um, servers throughout the world, including China, Chile, Germany, Korea, everywhere. I live in England, so I choose London. You have the option then to download either for Linux, um, Apple or Windows. I have a Windows machine. Um, then you choose the base system, the binaries for the base system, and then you select it. 37 megabytes. Notice that it comes with a combined 32-bit, 64-bit version. You don't need to choose which one. Click on that and then if you have firewalls installed like I do you get various options um, asking you where you want to save it and what have you um, I save it in my temporary downloads directory I already have a copy um, but I'll just download it again now once we've got the file downloaded, because I have zone alarm, it asks me if I want to open the file. Um, Windows <laughs> checks to see if it's a safe file, um, ignore the warning and say run. So now we actually start installing R. First of all it asks the language, obviously I'm English and it's chosen that, and then there's a whole load of setup um, options which we can ignore. Oh, it's interesting there that um, there are subdirectories, so you can have multiple versions of R. Um, lots of options, as I say, just go through them. Next, next, next. And then we actually get to start installing. It doesn't take very long, remember it's only about 30 megabytes. And also actually installs both on my machine 32 and 64 bit versions. Notice you can choose which version in the menu. The R input window, or console as it's properly called, looks rather intimidating um, to those that use the point and click interfaces. Actually, once you get to know a few simple commands, it's um, very easy and very quick. That's the interesting thing. Right, let's see how we can use R to carry out a few simple calculations. plus 7 times by brackets 3 plus log of 29 so making sure we've got the right number of brackets in each there's our result you can also kind of save various values and expressions in structured data sets, which is important in R, because obviously we don't want to be typing in things like this and lose them straight away. The simplest type of structured data is what's known as a vector. Vector you can think of as a column of values. Right, so let's give our first vector the name x. We use this greater than sign, then a minus sign, which means we assign values to x. So think of that as a get, that's how it's classed as an R. Get, 
Now we use another symbol C, which means we're going to join these values together to form a column, a vector. All right, two, five, seven, nine. So there's our vector, which consists of four values. Let's check. We got it there. Type in X. There are four values. If we had a long vector, we might want to find out how many values there are in it. We just type length. And then the vector name, we get our values. The interesting thing to note about R is that it's case sensitive. If I typed in length x, I get an error message. There's no such thing. So it's quite important um, to make sure you type things in without a caps lock down or um, typing in capitals a mistake halfway through the word unless it's there right so we can actually use some other functions now as well to find out about our vector so we want to know the mean value of the vector there we are it's a standard deviation simple as that let's create another vector called y again Greater than sign minus to sign it. And we're going to have some values together. We notice we've got four values in our previous vector. We'll add another four values here. So there's our new vector. You can also get graphics very quickly and very easily in R. If just type plot x, y, let's see what happens, there we are, we've got a plot, doesn't look very exciting, but actually very useful if you wanted to check what was going on quickly, a set of two vectors, two columns of data. So, in just a few minutes we've seen how we can use R as a simple calculator, how we can use various expressions in R to find out values about data, in the simplest structure being a vector, which we've looked at, and we've also produced a very simple graph just by using the plot command. On my website there are a large number of documents um, there is an introduction to R called Guess What? Getting started with R, an R commander, which we're looking at next. In the Getting Started document, I talk about the concatenate function, I talk about structured data, which we looked at very simple structured data, the vector, if you remember. And what I haven't talked about is actually the comment symbol, which is quite interesting look on the page concerning the comment symbol there we are so I have an example so there's the length function we used then I've added a comment afterwards this is quite useful because you might want to print out code you write in R and you don't understand it afterwards but if you add a comment to most lines then you can understand what you're doing See you again. Bye.